Oh, I'm in heaven. Mukbang are live video broadcasts that happen online. Also pronounced mukbang, mukbang, or mukbang, we, like many others, are going with mukbang. During mukbang broadcasts, hosts consume crazy, massive quantities of food as they interact with viewers. Mukbang is a hot trend that started out in South Korea in 2010. If you think you've got what it takes to eat a lot of food in front of an audience, you may just become an internet sensation. Let's help you get started by checking out the top 10 untold truths about mukbang. Bang. You guys are the best room ever. I will be eating with my hands. American YouTubers are trying it. She's blowing up on Shenanicam. No, seriously, she's literally blowing up on Shenanicam. This Korean trend has been adopted by some American YouTubers, including Nicholas P, who has consumed epic amounts of food while his video channel fans tuned in. In one memorable mukbang in 2017, he fried a whole packet of bacon until it had the ideal level of crispiness and then took it off the griddle. He then poured a couple of bags of Doritos on top. He chose nacho cheese flavored Doritos. During the same mukbang, he noshed on a huge bowl of noodles covered in a cheesy sauce. Thousands of people watched as he took bite after bite of everything that he prepared. YouTubers like Nicholas are also known as mukbangers. They're cashing in on the whole mukbang trend, or trying to. Most of the time, hosts do the videos from the comfort of their own homes. They use electric burners or eat from containers of takeout. Sometimes they get food delivered. Now and then, they break the classic mukbang formula by visiting restaurants and filming themselves while they eat. Nicholas P has done the mukbang thing at Chick-fil-A and Applebee's. You'll find other YouTubers doing mukbang at Sonic Drive-In or Taco Bell. YouTube viewers are really into watching mukbangers eat, whether they eat in or dine out. While the toll that mukbang takes on the stomachs of participants must be severe sometimes, mukbangers are willing to suffer for our amusement. Some of these eating champs have probably always had the capacity to put away a lot of food in one sitting. Next thing you know, you're at the drive through five times a day, eating a whole stick of butter in the dark. Wow, you did that? New to our channel and want to join our notification squad? It's easy. After you bang that subscribe button, just ring that bell. Korean breakfast jockeys make big bucks from mukbang. We're celebrating! Mukbang hosts in Korea usually get paid to play. In other words, they get cold, hard cash when they do these eating broadcasts. There are mukbang hosts in Korea who get as much as 10 grand a month just to prepare and eat food live in front of audiences. And this amount doesn't even include lucrative sponsorships. One of the most common payment structures for Korean mukbang hosts is money from fans, which comes in as virtual currency in star balloon form. This type of digital currency may be purchased and sold with typical paper money. While while some people do consider mukbang videos banal, people are watching them and enjoying them enough to send star balloons to Korean hosts. Me? Including BJ Patu, who once tried to eat five packages of ramen noodles in one sitting. He couldn't do it. He did eat for 18 minutes straight before throwing in the towel. Most of the world's premier mukbangers broadcast on the Afrika TV video broadcasting channel. 5% of all programming on this online platform is mukbang related. There, that's better. I hope I didn't put you off your appetite. Mukbang may promote poor eating habits. I eat and eat and eat, and I don't gain a pound. A trend that involves people eating huge amounts of food at one sitting may promote unhealthy eating habits. This is a potential downside of mukbang. People may grow accustomed to watching overeating and get tempted to do it themselves. Hey, we're getting pizza, you in? Oh, no, thanks. I got my bananas. Also, some mukbang broadcasts feature junk food, such as potato chips, pizza, massive sodas, and candy bars. We all know that junk food is a guilty pleasure. Most of us indulge in it sometimes. Mukbang throws traditional concepts of healthy portion control out the window. These eating broadcasts encourage gluttony on a grand scale. While there will be viewers who won't be provoked to overeat, Is butter a carb? Yes. More than a few may find themselves craving at least a temporary taste of the decadent mukbang lifestyle. You better come out and stop me. Another problem is that young people who are impressionable are enjoying the mukbang trend. Becoming accustomed to watching people pig out may influence their eating habits for life. They may even want to become mukbang hosts, because some of these hosts are able to earn enough to live comfortable lifestyles without needing to do regular jobs. Mukbang hosts know that people don't really want to watch them eat healthy stuff like salads. They want 
them to overindulge in foods that are guilty pleasures. By giving the public what they want, these hosts may be teaching some pretty dangerous eating habits to audiences of all ages. Die! 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 Millions of South Koreans tune into mukbang webcasts. Don't you worry about cholesterol, lung cancer, love handles? I don't worry about anything anymore. Do you tune into videos to watch people eat? Millions of people in Korea do. There are different theories behind the success of mukbang, in Korea and elsewhere. Some experts feel that people who don't want to eat alone enjoy watching mukbang as they consume their own meals. Others think that mukbang videos help lonely people to feel more connected to humanity. We all have appetites. Our appetites are primitive aspects of our being. That's why people try so many diets and new eating plans. They're trying to control their appetites. The appetite always returns. Since we all get hungry and want to eat, and eating is essential for survival, it's not too surprising that millions of Koreans enjoy watching BJs, or breakfast jockeys, chew, swallow, and chat. This trend keeps gaining steam because everyone gets hungry every single day and often at night. The universality of craving food is the reason why the mukbang trend is picking up steam outside of Korea. Lots of people have enjoyed watching eating contests or participating in eating contests. Mukbang have an eating contest contest vibe without all of the formality. With a mukbang, a typical person is sitting down and showing viewers what he or she is going to eat and commenting on the food. The host then begins to eat, and the eating is epic. There's no prize for finishing everything, unless you count lucrative earnings from fans, page views, or sponsors. If you do count these as prizes, you probably understand why so many people are doing mukbang videos. You could always do one yourself. Oh. Yeah. Americans didn't really get interested until 2015. How much did they first pay you to give up on your dreams? Mukbang is popular now in the USA, but it took time for this hot Korean trend to explode in America. Mukbang began to gain traction in America in 2015. This is because a company called Fine Brothers Entertainment posted a video of a bunch of famous YouTubers reacting to Korean mukbang. Shortly after the release of the video, Americans started searching for mukbang in Google and other search engines. This was really all that it took for Americans to get addicted to mukbang, just like Koreans are. These days, YouTube is a mukbang hotbed and the sheets are made of fire. The Fine Brothers video that started it all currently has more than 6.3 million views. A YouTuber named Trisha Paytas was inspired by the new trend and chose to do her own mukbang. During her eating broadcast, she noshed on toast, eggs, cupcakes, and chips. This video was posted in 2015, and it's on its way to 2 million views. Now, lots of Americans are doing mukbang, for sheer amusement or because they want to earn money from it, or both. I've been producing original video content for YouTube. YouTube. American culture is very food-oriented. There's the Southern barbecue, the classic diner food, the Creole-inspired cuisine of New Orleans, the fast food, the lobster rolls in Maine. There are really endless possibilities when it comes to gorging on American food on screen, while viewers react in real time. Of course, American mukbang hosts eat more than American-style food. They really eat everything. Oh, that's good. Good? Good. <laughs> Viewers prefer when hosts eat junk. Are you not entertained? Mukbang is all about extremes, so it makes sense that people want to watch hosts eat the bad stuff rather than balanced, healthy meals. That's why you'll find mukbangers feasting on fatty, greasy, high calorie meals and sugary, frosty drinks. Mukbangers allow us to live vicariously by pigging out in front of us while we watch. They're not afraid of dips, sauces, and other add ons that bump up the calorie counts. They're willing to eat vast amounts of diet busting foods, from rich pastas to crispy meats fried in oils to white bread and processed snacks, they are willing to push things to the edge for our entertainment. What are we doing? Stocking up. One mukbanger stocked up on fare from 7-Eleven for an eating broadcast that was all about 24-hour convenience. Another noshed on goodies from KFC. <laughs> With junk food mukbang, the only limitation is the host's imagination. While some mukbangers don't eat everything that they display for viewers, most make a valiant effort to get it all down. Maybe these hosts don't feel so good afterwards. Bon appetit. Some mukbang hosts exercise hours per day. 
To try and stay healthy by neutralizing or minimizing the effects of the mukbanger lifestyle, some eating broadcast hosts exercise for several hours a day. When you're taking in that many calories, so many of which come from fat, it's important to get in some cardio and burn off at least some of the calories. These hosts spend the time between broadcasts pumping iron, running, and doing other forms of exercise that help them to restore balance in their bodies. Unfortunately, eating a lot of saturated fat may cause long-term health risks, such as the risk of heart disease. Regular exercise may not be enough to lower or eliminate the risk. Some mukbang hosts are very young. Mukbang does tend to attract a youthful audience, so these hosts may feel like they're going to live forever. I know we all think that we're immortal. We're supposed to feel that way. That's a pretty common attitude in the teens and 20s. Mukbang was a product of Korean culture, where eating is considered a social activity. Unmarried or lonely Koreans would tune into the videos to feel more connected while they ate. One interesting fact is that people with eating disorders do watch these videos. Perhaps they want to watch people eat stuff that they won't allow themselves to eat. Some people with eating disorders find that watching Mukbang is therapeutic. I'm hungry! I'm hungry! I'm hungry! Because it makes them more comfortable with eating with other people. We are hungry as hell because we haven't had a meal in centuries. Viewers experience physical stimulation. This is your brain. Actually, it's a chimichanga. Many people who watch these videos get a bit of a physical rush. Some feel like they can practically taste everything that's being eaten on screen. The physical stimulation that they enjoy through mukbang keeps them tuning in. Maybe viewers start salivating when they see food that appeals to them, or something like that. Another enticing aspect of being a mukbang fan is the social interaction. Since hosts chat with fans as they eat, people are able to make new connections via mukbang broadcasts. The point, don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. The interactive element of typical eating broadcasts may be as much of a lure as the physical stimulation. People who want to chat about food and life in general may find that participating in mukbang, as fans, is a great way to become a part of a brand new subculture. The same fans tend to congregate and watch certain mukbangers' videos, so there's a strong social element to these eating broadcasts. They bring people together over a common love of indulgent eating. Bigger is better, right? There are different styles of mukbang videos. Thank you! Thank you, Apple. Typical mukbang include conventional video and audio. Hosts talk and it's broadcast live with interaction with fans. Some mukbang are silent. Others have a story time setup. Others are ASMR, which means Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. ASMR food videos are becoming quite popular in the USA and they've been popular in South Korea for a while. With ASMR, eating broadcasts are recorded with binaural headphones. This creates an audio sensation that makes listeners feel like they're in the same room as mukbang hosts. This ultra-realistic sound quality makes it easier for fans to get a buzz while they tune in. Since mukbang hosts do have options, they are able to tailor their broadcasts to their preferences or to the preferences of their fans. With the silent videos, it's mostly about the food and it's also about the facial expressions and movements of the host. With story time, hosts share information about their lives which is a little more in-depth than typical non-story time broadcasts. The story will add resonance and depth to the broadcast. Everyone's different, so there's a type of mukbang that is right for you. Unless you're one of those people who are grossed out by watching someone eat. How about if I chew loud? Sometimes when I eat, I chew loud. Nom, 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 nom. People sensitive to chewing noises find mukbang unappealing. Hey, Mike, you think you could crunch any louder? I can still hear out of this one. Some of us are hardwired to be grossed out by eating noises. Others don't mind the sound of chewing. Those who do hate eating noises should definitely stay away from the ASMR style mukbang because the eating noises will be so pronounced. Watching people pig out isn't for everyone. It's off-putting to some, even if they can tolerate slurping and chewing noises. Well, slurping is totally acceptable in this part of the world. <laughs> mukbang is for people who love to watch others eat and talk about what they're eating. If you want to start a new side hustle, you may want to start recording mukbang videos yourself. All you'll need is the right hardware and software, an engaging personality, plenty of food, and a very strong stomach. <laughs> We've got the plenty of food thing covered with our other videos. Just point and click. And if you would like to become an official Babble Topper, click on the join link in the description below for more details.